Hello everyone and welcome to the tactical version of automated control block examples. In my previous videos, I showed off some of the basics of ACBs as well as examples of things you can do to make your vehicles move in interesting and useful ways. This time, we'll be checking out basically everything else. I'm hoping there comes a point where some of these are outdated thanks to the quality of life updates. But at the time of recording this video, it is sometimes the only way to achieve the things I'm about to show you. As usual with my tutorials, you can find timestamps below in chatters and all that good stuff. All right, so for my first trick, this is one of those ones that are a bit less useful already because of updates, because one of the primary uses was to turn weapons off when your ammunition was low. But right now, there's already kind of that option uh, right here where you can make your uh, weapons stop firing if you don't have enough energy or materials. And actually, with lasers, you can do something like that as well by using the power settings. So you can actually set the priority of your lasers through there. As you can see, the multipurpose laser block is here and you can change the power priority to make to either make sure it always gets power or to make sure that it gets power after crucial systems. But there are still reasons to start turning weapons off. For example, one of my lasers uh, only fires at planes if they're sufficiently fast or any vehicle if they're pretty fast because they're, they'd be, be hard to hit. But the laser is multi-purpose and I don't want to be spending the energy on something that's slower and easier to hit with other weapons. So here's what you do. For example, in the past you could have used uh, ammo access. And what you do is you go to the wireless receivers and you do set channel and you can do zero to essentially disconnect it. And then you can do one, two, three, four or yeah, one, two, three, four to connect it to whatever AI you'd like. So what you do is, as I've shown before, you rename the things you want to turn on and off. For example, let's say gun. You pick your condition. So let's say ammo maximum, wireless receiver, and turn off. And for example, I'd turn it off if the ammo access is below this much. Actually, this is a pretty bad example. Here we go. So for example, if we are below or rather between 0 and 20% ammo, which is relatively low, we are effectively disconnecting the channel. Oh, and let's not forget to do this because right now I'm disconnecting um, all of the wireless receivers uh, on my vehicle. So don't forget your filter. And right now it shows, yeah, not connected. So I've turned everything off on my vehicle, which is fine. <laughs> And obviously you'd want the opposite, right? So you do minimum 20% up to 100%. And then you do gun. And then you go into the wireless receiver. Set channel to one. And it's going to fire automatically again. There are a lot more applications for this, however. And I'm going to show you another one right away. You know, when I mentioned for my laser, for instance, uh, you change the condition to target and speed. And this time I'd say, OK, if the vehicle is between 100 meters per second and 250 meters, I think that's too fast for most of my things. Then turn it on and vice versa, turn it off um, when the speed is too low so if it's let's say not within that speed but be careful about that because it could be faster uh turn it off right and in that case it would turn my laser off any anything controlled like that you can turn on and off this way there's another example of this here we are on one of my larger vehicles because there's yet another example of uh, applications of changing the channel on receivers and what am I doing I'm doing the wrong all right 
and I don't necessarily want to be in prefab mode. All right. One other application of this is to change target priority cards. You think that's weird, right? Um, why would you want to switch target priority cards? Well, the main one is, for example, if vehicles get within a certain range. So where is it? There's no enemy within that range. There's no, okay, so there we go. If there's an enemy within 500 meters, it's gonna change the channel on these cards. And what that lets me do is that normally I just have my standard uh, target priority, but if an enemy gets within 500 meters, it's gonna switch and set all of my weapons to target the thing which is closest. Now, this is a bit annoying to do because you can't edit a target priority card, which is disconnected. So in order to do this, we're gonna have to turn off whatever is interfering with the, the channels on this thing. And we're gonna set it to channel two. And there we go. So I have uh, maximum priority to closest range, basically, and a slight uh, priority to whatever is higher altitude. And that's basically it, really. You're just connecting your priority cards via wireless receiver. And just the same as before, you set up your condition the way you want to change the channel. So in this case, it's just enemy range. So in this case, just enemy, right? It's not your main target. If any enemy enters that range, then I'm changing my target priority. My next trick is in the same, you know, kind of idea of turning weapons on and off. This time I'm actually looking to leave the weapon firing until it's out of ammo. Because currently, if the materials dip below a certain point, or if I disconnect the local weapons controller uh, receiver, then it just stops firing, right? But there could be more ammunition in there. And we'll turn on the UI, and as you can see, it's fully loaded. And I can fire it. And you'll see it's reloading, right? 367, 369, it's back. So what you can do is you create an invalid shell. Now, I hope that this trick uh, doesn't need to stay into the game because I think it should be something relatively easy to just, you know, uh, have a condition to disconnect uh, intakes from their ammo source. But right now what you can do is this. So just have a single gunpowder, doesn't matter. Uh, and what you need is the ID, as you can see here, ID, yeah, ID 2603. So what you do is you pick, for example, ammo access as before, you pick the value that you want. It can be a flat value as well using this uh, this option. And then what you do is simply go into ammo intakes and set ammo intakes and then you put in the ID number in there. And obviously you'd want to do the opposite. So copy paste. And then let's just do a not condition. And then we'd want ammunition ID 2575. And that will reconnect the ammunition. There we go, just like this. Now this is already connected back. So as we can see, it's fully reloaded. If I fire, it's gonna be fully reloaded. All right, 364, 365, 366. And if we disable that, and I don't know why that's cut off, test that, you're gonna see ammo controller as, has an invalid shell design. And it's not actually gonna mess with the ammo that's currently in there, but you'll see that if I fire, it's not gonna reload. And that's exactly what you want. That stops it from using materials. And we're back on the boring wooden platform for this next example. Now, this is an application that's similar to what I've shown in my basic uh, ACB tutorial, but I didn't show or particularly um, 
Uh, I didn't explain this in detail quite as much, so I'm going to go over it right now. And what's going to happen is if, if you're a normie and you use laser warners to deploy smoke, well, you might have the problem where your laser warners are getting blown off. You do, right? Nothing's triggering your smoke. It's going to go on for the remainder of the duration and then it's going to stop. We don't like that. And, you know, why wait to deploy your smoke um, before, like, everything on your vehicle gets hit a little bit, right? There's no reason to do that. So what you can do, first of all, you'll need a condition that's always true. So generally speaking, I like to do this. This is always true. And then we can have smoke dispensers, really smoke. Now, you know, that'll work all of the time, but that might not be optimal. You might not be getting shot with lasers at all. So you'll want something to turn it on and off. So what you'll do is you rename it. So let's say smoke. And then you have a condition to trigger the smoke. Laser attack in the last 10 seconds. That seems reasonable. And then what you'll do is you will set the other ACB to activate, name it smoke. And then if you do test, boom, it's back. Disable, test, it's back. And you'll want to turn it off because what happens is as soon as a laser attack is detected, this ACB turns on and it doesn't turn off. And that's the whole point, right? That way, if your warners are blown off, your smoke keeps going. But you'll want to turn it off, and presumably you don't necessarily want to turn it off even if you don't detect laser attacks, because that only means that you're not detecting a laser attack, not that you're not being hit uh, by lasers anymore. Although, you could do something like, you know, if there wasn't a laser attack in the last 60 seconds, then smoke... Oh, not smoke. Smoke's dead. Smoke... And then, where is it? Uh, ACB. And then say disable. And now it's off. But you could do something a bit more safe, but that might also waste uh, more materials and just do, if there isn't an enemy within 3000 meters, then turn the smoke off. And that's it. Very simple. You can do something similar with uh, flares. Uh, and missile decoys in general, which I've shown in the basic uh, ACB tutorial. And we're back with one of my hover tanks for this next demonstration. And I'm going to warn you right away that this one is a bit more niche, let's say, uh, because shields have a small wind-up time now. And this trick is about turning shields off if you don't need them. So as you can see right now, I have this simple one where my shields turn off by using this thing, shield projector, set drive below one to disable, as said in the in the tooltip. And this is just standard, right? You don't want to be running shields outside of battle. And I've got another one here where it sets them to maximum drive if there is an enemy within 3000 meters bog standard right turn the shields on in battle but there's a little bit of a difference here now because power is limited on this vehicle what i do is if my targeted enemy is within five degrees to 175 degrees basically which is on my right it turns off the shields on the left Basically, I renamed the shields on the other side and it turns them off. And you'll notice that I'm actually using the priority thing here. Because I've got a shield on the turret that is not, you know, associated with a side or another, I just want to, you know, turn on all of the shields with a lower priority. And then I turn off the ones on the left if the enemy is on the right. And I have the opposite here. Turn it off on the right if the enemy is on the left. Now, this is a bit um, a bit riskier even than 
uh, a potential alternative because this is just a targeted enemy, right? And this hover tank in particular will target the most powerful and largest build uh, on the battlefield, which means that its active shield will be on the side that's facing uh, towards the worst enemy, but there could be something on the other side and the shield would still be turned off. If you don't want that to happen, just use the um, generic enemy bearing and you can do the same thing, right? So just like five degrees and about 175, I'm just doing that because sometimes I don't want the shields to flicker on and off basically if the enemy is straight in front of me or straight behind me. I only want to turn them off if the enemy is more or less clearly on one side and that's one of the reasons where I'm why I'm not turning the shields on if not, because there's that little bit of let's say wiggle room uh, straight in front and st straight behind if you're chasing an enemy or if you're running away from them right so that's one way to save power this next one is about warp drives I don't personally like them but I'm going to show you how well one way you could use them anyway so basically, you would probably uh, use two ACBs to trigger them, one for missiles and torpedoes, and the other one for cram shells. And as you can see, I've got basically the condition here for crams or missiles, and then engage the warp drive. Now, this is a bit more complicated than this. I've got a minimum activation interval here, because presumably you don't want to you know, engage the warp drive too soon and then you just warp a few meters and you waste the energy and blah 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 and it's all terrible and then I have exactly the same condition uh, but set up to begin charging with the one exception that it's also on a delay of one second so basically when it detects something it makes you warp it waits one second it starts charging and it can't activate more often than every 10 seconds and that's it. It's really that simple. And finally, here's how I go about relaying information to breadboards. Things that the breadboard itself can't detect, but that ACBs can. So basically the idea is just to have... Well, there's two ways to go about it, really. Right now I have my usual always true condition. And I'm using complex controls. In this case, the up key to transmit a signal, basically, which is just read by the breadboard. The signal is constant. Now, you don't have to do this because obviously that entails um, turning the breadboard, uh, not the breadboard, but the ACB on and off to start or stop the signal. But the thing to keep in mind, for example, if you use laser attack, is that this is going to stay on for basically 10 seconds after being hit by a laser and then it's going to turn off. So you have to be very careful about how the signal will reach the breadboard. Is it just going to flicker? Is it going to stay on for a few seconds? Is it going to just stay on for one frame? And that can make writing your breadboard a lot more difficult. So make sure you take into account the way the ACB is set up. So sometimes, yes, it's going to use more blocks to set up a condition that's always true like this but it might be easier to work with in the breadboard depending on your skills and that's going to be it for acbs for now please consider liking and subscribing if you found the video helpful and leave a comment if you have questions or if you would like to suggest topics for future tutorials thank you for watching bye bye